is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. Hello, and welcome back to Smart Consulting Sourcing, your guiding star through the intricate world of consulting procurement. If last week we took a step back to basic with Consulting 101, this week we're stepping up a notch. We'll be navigating the vast landscape of business capabilities, delving into the seven high-level competencies paramount for any thriving organization. So strap in and prepare for an insightful expedition into the core of modern businesses. So the seven plus one capabilities we'll be covering are as follows. Strategies, operations, finance and risk, sales and marketing, human capital, digital, technology and data, and research and development. And there is a special category for some capabilities that don't really fit in the standard norms. So today we'll explore the first four, and in our next episode, we'll unravel the next. So let's embark on the journey, one taxonomy tier at a time. But before diving into our main topic, a quick recap for our previous episode is in order. So the term consulting has historical origin derived from the French consulté and further back from the Latin consultare. Both essentially signify the act of seeking guidance. Today, the essence of consulting remains consistent, service as a source of specialized expertise in contemporary settings, be it physical boardrooms or virtual meetings. So in the modern landscape, Consultants specialize in many areas, from event planning to wine curation. However, when we streamline the focus, three key domains emerge, management, IT, and engineering. And among these, management consulting often garners the most attention. So the consulting process is quite structured. It usually begins with onboarding and aligning consultants and clients on project goals. This is succeeded by a diagnostic phase meticulously evaluating the client challenges and requirements. And the subsequent recommendation phase involves a detailed analysis, while consultants leverage gather insights to suggest optimal solutions. Post-recommendation, we can have a roadmap detailing the transition from the current state to the envisioned objective. And the implementation phase then operationalizes these strategies. Strategic presentations play a crucial role throughout the project, often influencing the project direction. And as the consulting engagement nears completion, a wrap-up phase ensures commitments are honored and a continuity plan is established for the future operations for the client. So in essence, consulting encapsulates a combination of specialized knowledge, plan, foresight, and diligent execution to propel an organization's growth and success. So if you miss our previous episode, you can catch up on Spotify, Apple, podcast, YouTube, your choice. For, and for a deeper dive into the consulting world, head on to consultingquest.com. You know, delve into our rich white papers, ebooks, and podcast transcriptions and collection. While you're at it, why not share content with your colleagues? And if you're compelled, a review would be highly appreciated. You know, your feedback isn't just valuable, it's our, it's our driving force. So it pushes up to enhance and elevate our content constantly. So together, let's journey through this exploration of insights. I'm also excited to share that we hold hands-on workshop throughout the year. You know, these sessions cover pivotal topics such as negotiating with consulting firm and crafting an effective RFP for consulting services. So if you're eager to join us in one or more of these workshops, you can drop me an email at hcl at consultingquest.com. Now let's dive up to our focus for today, the capabilities and services hope proudly marketed by consulting firms. So you might observe that this capability often mirror the function within an organization. Not exactly the kind of revelation that would cause a seismic shift in the business world, right? So it's this predictable parallel that we describe in our taxonomy. In essence, it's an attempt to classify consulting offerings in the same manner that one might organize their bullshit by theme, relevance, and genre. 
except here, it's all about aligning services with organizational needs. So why should it be of interest for me? You may ponder. Well, understanding precisely what consultants offer is imperative. You know, it's the difference between appreciating the subtlety of fine wine and simply recognizing its flavor. To harness the power of consulting, you must discern its nuances. So it's worth noting that the consulting landscape is multifaceted as organizations themselves. Today, we won't just skim the surface. Instead, we're diving deep into each high-level capability, elucidating the nested sub-capabilities. And to marry theory with practice, we'll pepper our discussion with real-world project examples. Because what good is a theoretical map if you don't know how it correlates to the actual terrain? Well, so let's come back on this journey, demystifying the consulting lexicon, one taxonomy tier at a time. So let's start with strategy. It's often referred to as the queen of capabilities and rightfully so, not merely because of its exalted position in the pantheon of organizational priorities, but also because it tends to come with a price tag that might even make the most seasoned CFO raise an eyebrow. So at its core, strategy is about charting a path. It's the North Star, you know, guiding organization to their desired destination. And within the overarching canopy of strategy, we find several pivotal elements. Strategy formulation, this is where the journey begins. You know, businesses, whether startups or industry titans, must formulate clear, actionable strategies that define whether they want to go, where they want to go, and how they intend to get there. Think of Apple's transition from a computer manufacturer to a lifestyle brand. That was not serendipity. It was strategic genius. Then we have business transformation. This isn't merely about change, it's about evolution. You know, Nokia was the titan of the mobile phone industry, faltered because it didn't transform quickly enough in the smartphone era. On the flip side, under Satya Nadella's helm, Microsoft transformed its focus toward cloud computing and ripped handsome rewards. Now we have m &A, mergers and acquisitions. So m &A can be the nitrous boost organizations use to leapfrog competitors or diversify their portfolios. Disney's acquisition of Pixar stands as a testament to the power of strategic m and revitalizing its animation domain. Then we have organization governance and processes. It's an often underestimated element, but the linchpin in entering strategy is not just a document that gathers dust. It's the structure that supports your strategy, the governance that oversees its execution, and the processes that ensure it's carried out efficiently. No better example than Toyota, whose lean manufacturing processes became a strategy adopted globally. Now, let's address the elephant in the boardroom, the digital age. In a world ruled by digital, data, artificial intelligence, and a ceaseless march of technological innovation. Strategy isn't a static five-year plan anymore. It's agile, it's adaptive, and it's anticipatory. So Netflix pivoted from DVD rentals to streaming, staying ahead of the digital curve and exemplifying strategy's evolu evolving nature in the internet age. If we were to distill this into the types of projects you might typically encounter or even commission in the strategy realm, they range from growth strategy project, uh, defining how a company can scale its operation or diversify its offerings. Market entry strategy, plotting the entry into a new geographical or project market. Turnarounds, uh, rejuvenating ailing companies and business units. Or PMI, post-merger integration, which is all about ensuring that the two becoming one is not just a romantic notion, but a business success story. Each of these projects, in essence, is an endeavor to craft or define a roadmap that paves the way for organizations to navigate the ever complex maze of business challenges and opportunities. Now, we're talking about operations. So, I will pivot from a lofty height of strategy. Let's ground ourselves in the engine room of businesses' operations. Like, funnily enough, while we often herald the modern age of strategy consulting, it was in the realm of operations that consulting made its humble debut in the late 19th century. Operations, quite simply, is the heart, the pulse, and the rhythm of any business. Now we can start with operation management. That's about the daily running and monitoring of the business. It's ensuring that processes are efficient, resources are used optimally, and that there's a steady hand on the business tiller. 
guiding it through calm and stormy waters of life. Then you have manufacturing. Still, the art of if the art of creation, whether it's a tech giant assembling the latest smartphone or a craft brewery perfecting in next batch, manufacturing is this transformative process of converting raw materials into finished goods. And if manufacturing is about creation, the supply chain ensures that the creation reaches their intended destination. You know, from sourcing raw materials to ensuring the timely delivery of finished products. It's a complex ballet that demands precision. And now we have procurement. It's the art and science of obtaining what a business needs. It's not just about buying, but about ensuring that what's brought is of the right quality, at the right price, and delivered at the right time. And in a world where projects dominate the landscape, the PMO, Project Management Office, ensure that they are executed efficiently, within scope, on time, and on budget. And finally, you have capital project. You know, project to this is significant, often long-term investment made to create, upgrade, or maintain a company's physical asset. Think of a vast infrastructural project like building a new factory, upgrading an existing facility, or landing a new production line. Such endeavors, due to their scale and impact, need meticulous planning, management, and oversight. So operational excellence is not merely a buzzword, it's a necessity. In our hyper-competitive business environment, it's the companies that master their operation that stand tall. They can produce at lower cost, deliver faster, adapt quickly to market changes. However, achieving this excellence is no walk in the park. Businesses grapple with evolving technologies, shifting global supply chains, and the constant need to innovate. Now, for those craving real-world applications, here are some projects you might encounter under the operation umbrella. Uh, optimizing a supply chain footprint to streamline and bolster efficiencies, diving deep into tackling the tail of spend in raw material to extract every ounce of value, uh, setting up a PMO for an integration, ensuring everything stays on track during complex measures, or launching a Leak Six Sigma project in a factory to chase those ever-elusive efficiencies. So while strategy might chart on North Star, operation is the crew vessel and wind ensuring we reach our destination. Now, when you navigate the treacherous and unpredictable waters of the business world, you require the steadfast compass. And that's where finance and risk come into play. While inherently distinct, those two components often dance in tandem, especially in our modern globalized economy. Finance is no longer limited to mere bookkeeping or budget balancing. Today, this function is the strategic brain behind pivotal business decisions. In an age where markets fluctuate at the drop of a tweet and currencies can be as volatile as tropical weather, finance experts don't just crush numbers, they discern patterns, predict futures, and strategize for sustainable growth. And if finance is the strategies, risk and compliance is the guardian. Their domain entails identifying potential hazards, whether they're operational, financial, or reputational, and crafting strategies to mitigate them. Actually, is the ever-growing tapestry of regulation, from local laws to international mandates, ensuring compliance is no small fit, but it's crucial to the survival and prosperity of business today. So let's face facts. The financial world has been riddled with challenges now more so than ever. Globalization has brought prosperity, no doubt, but it has also intertwined economies so tightly that a hiccup in one can cause a ripple effect across the globe. Who can forget the domino effect of financial crisis or the corporate compliance scandals that have rocked boardrooms and made headlines? However, adversity also breeds innovation. The significance of stringent compliance and robust risk management cannot be understated. Consider the development of a risk strategy for a transport company, vital in a sector where variables like fuel costs, global politics, and environmental concerns intersect. Or the intricate financial process review, diving deep into a company's financial mechanism to ensure efficiency and accuracy. The realm of compliance is vast, as projects like the GDPR gap analysis and remediation for an international bank showcase, ensuring that safeguarding of client data in an era where information is gold. And similarly, the role of a virtual data protection officer for a market research consultancy 
reinforces the need for industry to be ever vigilant and proactive in data protection. So in summary, finance and risk aren't just back office functions. They are the guardians and strategists ensuring that businesses not only thrive, but do so with integrity and foresight. And while the financial endurance might be complex, it's a journey every successful venture must undertake with a firm grip on the compass of finance and risk. And now for any business, the narrative it weaves for its consumer is paramount. Sales and marketing with their cohorts, communication and customer services are the architect of this narrative. More than mere transaction sales today are about relationship. It's no longer just about pushing a product, but understanding the needs and desires of a customer and catering to them effectively. Whether you're in B2B or B2C, it's the trust and reliability you build that propel sales. And the heartbeat of brand identity marketing does more than just promote too. In this digital age with myriad platforms and touch points, marketing is about crafting a consistent and compelling brand story. It's about being visible in the right places with the right message at the right time. Long after the sale is made, it's the customer service that leads to lasting impression. So this segment ensures that customers are not just satisfied, but delighted. You know, fostering loyalty and building brand advocates. The landscape of sales and marketing has transformed, particularly with digital platform emerging as significant influencers. Gone are the days when the billboard or TV spot were the zenith of marketing. Today, a tweet, an Instagram story, or a TikTok video can shape brand perceptions for better or worse. Taking a look at real life application give perspective to the fatness and vitality of this domain. So imagine designing a pricing strategy for a B2B company, striking the delicate balance between competitiveness and profitability. Or consider a sales effectiveness program for a service company, tweaking and refining every element of the sales process to maximize conversions. The art of designing sales territory for pharmaceutical companies showcases the importance of data and analytics, ensuring that every region gets the focus it requires. And then there's the intricate task of creating compensation system for sales, which doesn't just incentivize, but also aligns with the company's long-term goals. In essence, sales and marketing is a dance, a dance that requires synchronization, flair, and an audience-centric approach. And in a world constantly evolving, keeping pace requires both skill and strategy. So well, folks, that's a wrap for today's episode, but we're not finished yet. We've got some more capabilities that I wanted to discuss, but that's going to be for our next episode. So stay tuned. But before that, let's take a quick recap on what we've learned today. So strategy is vital and costly organizational capability serving as the guiding north star for businesses. And key elements include strategy for formulation, business transformation, M&A, and organization governance and processes. And in the digital age, strategy has become agile and adaptive. And common project in the strategy realm encompass growth strategy, market entry strategy, turnarounds, and post-merger integration, each essential for achieving business success and staying competitive in a rapidly evolving world. The finance function in any organization has expanded beyond basic number crutching into a strategic role that informs pivotal business decisions and anticipates market trends. And risk and compliance are crucial to identify potential hazards and ensuring businesses adhere to local laws and intentional mandates. They are the guardians that ensure businesses operate with integrity. Sales and marketing are no longer about mere transactions and promotions. They're about building relationship, understanding customer needs, and crafting a compelling brand story. In the realm of customer services, satisfaction isn't the goal anymore. The aim is to delight customers, fostering loyalty and turning them into brand advocates. And the event of digital platform has dramatically transformed the landscape of sales and marketing, making it crucial for brands to stay visible in the right places with the right message. So the successful application of these functions can be seen in real life scenarios, such as development of a risk strategy for a transport company, the design of a pricing strategy for a B2B company, or creating an effective sales program 
for a service company. Success in today's business world requires a synchronized approach with each of these functions working in harmony to navigate the complex financial labyrinth and keep us up with an ever evolving world. So till then, stay safe and keep up the smart consulting sourcing game. Remember, if you have any questions or need additional support with your consulting procurement endeavors, I'm always game for a chat. Feel free to connect me on LinkedIn or drop me an email at hcl at consultingquest.com. Au revoir for now and happy sourcing. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.